Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our occasional series of Ask a Writing Coach. I am Beth Barani, your host. I am a creativity coach for writers. I help genre fiction novelists write, market, and publish their fiction. I myself am an award-winning novelist of Henrietta, Henrietta the Dragon Slayer, a young adult adventure fantasy series, and romance, and now science fiction I'm working on. So with me today, I'm very excited to bring in our guest, Sue Brown Moore, a friend of mine who is a freelance editor. And we know each other from our local networking, our local writers community, and I'm very happy to bring Sue on so we can talk about editing and what a novelist needs to do to have his or her manuscript ready to hand off to someone like Sue if they want to hire a freelance editor. So welcome, Sue. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Beth. This is super exciting. I love doing interviews about editing. It's oh, just fun. Like I never get to talk about my craft. And I, you know, because I'm always, when you're writing or editing, you're behind the screen, you're looking at the words, your mind is always in the story. So it's great to actually talk to people <laughs> for a change. For one, <laughs> people. <laughs> right. So my name is Sue Brownmore. I am a freelance editor for indie authors. I'm also a mega romance enthusiast. So I mean, by mega, I mean, I've been reading romance since I could remember reading. That's my favorite genre, which is how I met Beth through Romance Writers of America. Um, and I recently just signed on with Dreamspun and Press as the acquisitions editor for their Dreamspun uh, lines, the three Dreamspun lines, which is very exciting too. That's sort of like the epitome of what, what I want to be as an editor. I want to help find those great stories. And part of finding those great stories is identifying what's great about them. And I think that's what we're going to talk about today. Absolutely. That is so exciting. Congratulations for that. Thank and you. there's something so wonderful about discovering new talent as an acquisitions editor. Absolutely. That's fabulous. Yeah. Wonderful. So before a writer brings something to you, obviously they're going to write their, their book, their manuscript. And we'll just say her and she and all that, because we're probably mostly, you work mostly with romance authors. I, well, I do. I, I work with actually lots of different fiction, fictional authors. So some are men, okay. but we can use she and her because it's just easier than stumbling over pronouns. Yes, let's do but that. That's so, not, it's not being exclusive. That's right. So talking to a writer who's thinking about, oh gosh, one day I'm probably going to hire someone like Sue. What can you advise them are the foundational elements of a story? I think there's two really important ways to think about writing your story. One is your setup and one is your structure. So your setup is things like, um, who is the story about? What are they doing? And where are they doing it? That's your characters, your plot, and your world, your story world. The second important thing to think about is what, if you hang around writing long enough, you're going to hear as GMC, goal, motivation, and conflict. And that impacts your characters and your, their, the plots, basically. It can impact world building, but that's a little bit more nuanced. So basically, you have to know what story you want to tell, and you have to have, give the, reason, the reader a really good reason to hang in there with you. And I think that's, that's a really challenging thing. And it's something that takes a lot of practice as a writer, which Absolutely. is, it's really important to just keep trying just, and you're not going to be good at first and that's okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm with you. We really need to practice our craft. And I know for me, I get feedback with critique partners. So do you offer early feedback? Like when is it a good time for someone to bring their manuscript to you? That's a great question. And it depends on what you want from the feedback. So if you are in a place where you have this story idea and you know, you know, it's got, it's, it's, it's rich. The story world is rich and, and you want to tell a story in it and you have a character and this character's in your head, but you don't really know where you want to go with that. Then maybe you want to partner with a developmental editor to map out a plot arc across multiple books in a series. Maybe you want to create the actual story with an editor. That's not what I usually get, but I have found sometimes I'll get a manuscript and, and I'm asking a lot of questions like, who's your audience? And do you want to self-publish? Do you want to send this to a publisher? Because the answers to those questions dictate what kind of story you're going to tell. Because not every publisher wants the same type of story and some things don't work as well for self-publishing in our current atmosphere. That's not to say they might not a year from now, but the story that you want to tell dictates what, what you do along the way. So I think sitting down and figuring out, okay, here's the story I want to tell, here's who I want to tell it to, and here's how I want to get it out there. 
can help you really boil down what you want. So if you, if you already know that stuff and you just want to write the story, then you want to talk to a developmental editor once you have done everything you can to make it amazing. Like you've gotten, you've talked to your critique partners, you've let them see as many, as many versions as they're willing to see before they get fatigued because eventually they stop seeing anything, right? Um, you want to send it into contests and make sure that your opening pops. You want to maybe have a, a few beta readers look it over and like get people from different spectrums. Like really, really look at your audience and say, okay, let's say you, you want YA. Talk to different kinds of YA readers, people who enjoy adult, people who don't enjoy adult, people who like paranormal, people who like historical, because they're all going to have different viewpoints, different feedback for you. So not everybody's you know, feedback is going to be appropriate for you, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can take the best of that and you can, you can cull it into something that really works for you. And once you've gotten to the point where you cannot look at this manuscript anymore, it's as clean as you can make it, you have no idea what to do next, this is, this is it. It's as good as you're going to get. Then you work with a developmental editor because chances are they're going to rip it up and tell you how to do it differently. <laughs> <laughs> Even and better. I don't, mean, I don't mean that badly, but yeah, that's generally what happens. Yeah. Well, when you give something to an editor for their opinion, they're going to find things wrong with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In my experience. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you like about edit editing? What? Why is this a passion for you? So, a lot of people always ask me, "Why don't I write?" And the answer is, I do write. To be an editor, you have to be a, an author. You have to understand the mechanics of writing and why the emotion behind a reader's psyche. So I do write. I just don't write original fiction because I don't have voices in my head, right? But when I'm, when I'm reading a story, I can see all the ways to make it better, to make it pop, to make the character stand out, to make me really fall in love with it. And that's what I love about editing because I get the chance to actually help the author make that come true. It's not just like in my head where I'm like, oh, but if only it was this. No, I get the chance to actually say, hey, if we, if we change this to this, and what about if the character does this instead? And are you sure you want the character to be this type of character? You know, are you sure you want this to be a paranormal romance? What about making it an ur urban fantasy and really spinning it more in the story world? So I love being able to give that critical feedback, but also not having to make the final decision. Because ultimately, it's the author's work, right? Yeah. It's just me telling you what I think about it. And I think that's the coolest thing ever. That is really cool. And yes, it's hard work as the author. We have to make the final decision. Yeah. And I always tell my writers, that is the work. That those decisions, that's our job. Um, so what is your favorite kind of book to read for fun? You mentioned you're an avid, lifelong romance author. Yeah. Is there a particular kind of genre that you just adore or an author? Yeah. Or? Oh, well, so I do love romance. Um, I started off with historicals because, you know, pirates and lords and ladies and rakes. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I really sort of got away from historical. I'm getting back into it now, randomly. Um, but I really like paranormal romances, and I like urban fantasy. There's a pretty fine line there between the difference between those two. Um, and I also like generally anything contemporary. I like men in uniform and, you know, just the spectrum of contemporary romance I really enjoy. But I also read sci-fi and fantasy. Um, I just like a good story. But I like stories with fantasy or not real elements. So if it can happen on Earth, unless it's a romance, I'm less interested in it as a reader because mm -hmm. reading is my escape, right? It's where yeah. I go to get away from my life. And if it could happen in real life, then I don't want it in my head because this is not an escape then. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm so with you. The science fiction and fantasy are, are my favorite genres. And like you, I, I also love a good mystery, but it has to have humor. Yeah, to totally. lighten it up. Yeah. Yeah. And so what is your favorite kind of book to edit? <sighs> That's a good question too. And I think I can't really say I have a favorite. Normally I would say, oh, romance, because that's what I read. But I've gotten, I've, I've actually edited a lot of books in the last year that were not romance. And I have enjoyed them as much as the romance editing. And I think that's because it's a challenge that when I go into it, it's, it's not my normal mindset. And every time I come out the end of one of those edits, I'm a stronger editor and I feel um, connected with the story, no matter what the genre is. I just want it to be a good story. So, I mean, realistically, anything I'm willing to read, I'm willing to edit. Great. So um, urban fantasy, paranormal romance, science fiction and fantasy, generally, those are really 
fun projects for you? Those right. are fun. I also mm-hmm. did a crime thriller, which was, which was surprisingly fun as well. It was a little bit gory and I kind of enjoyed that about it. Um, I did a, a, a epic fantasy, which was immersive and way more exciting than I expected it to be. Um, and, and you never know which stories are going to be the hard ones to edit. They're going to take the most personal energy and which ones are, are going to be more of a breeze. And I love that too, because I just want to be able to go into it. And, and I love that each, each thing is a new, a new project. So it's not a boring life, <laughs> not by any, any stretch. <laughs> That's wonderful. You get to really immerse yourself into their stories. And I do that for my clients who are part of my group coaching program. I do immersive editing and development and editing. And it, it, it is, it, their story becomes a part of you and, and you get to have a hand in shaping that. That's really wonderful. So uh, when we talked a little bit, well, actually we, you kind of already answered this question is when people are ready to come to you. And you also addressed how they can prepare to come to you. Is there anything else you want to add to that that will let a re- an, an author know, okay, I am ready now to hire someone like Sue? Yeah, I think there's some things to consider um, if you're trying to decide whether or not you need this kind of editing service because it's not right for everybody. If you're gonna if you're gonna publish traditionally, really look at the requirements of the house that you're aiming for, the houses that you're aiming for, because some of them want you to have professional editing before you bring it in. In those cases, yeah, you should definitely reach out once it's as ready as you can make it. Um, some of them don't necessarily want you to spend your time because they're going to they're gonna redo it anyway. And then by the time you get to that point, you may have too much fatigue and it might be emotionally stressful for you. Um, so that's a consideration to keep in mind. If you're self-publishing, how far are you from your publishing date? Because developmental is, the, is really the first level of editing you should do. Um, you, you should not have had it copy edited or line edited before you give it to a developmental editor because many of those pieces that I suggest you change may be pieces that you paid to have edit and that's wasted money. So that's something to keep in mind as well. The timeline, um, it can take a while and developmental editors get booked up pretty far in advance too. So I book out several months in advance. And if you say you want to release a book in December, you have to count backwards. So you have to have to have a, you need a cover, right? If you're self-publishing, you need a cover. You need someone to do proofing at the very end. You need someone to do copy edits, maybe a couple rounds. You might want line edits. You might want one or two rounds of developmental or structural. So each of those takes time because the editor has to have at least a week or two to do it. And then you need a week or two, at least sometimes a month or two after you get it back from a developmental to do your work. So if you count the time back, you might need to start working with a developmental editor six months before you want to publish a book. So that's really important because it, the most heartbreaking thing for me is when an author that I really want to work with comes and says, oh, hey, I need you to edit this, but I want to release it next month. There's just no way. I, I don't, even if I, I had the opening, I don't know how you're going to do that and still be a sane person. <laughs> so that's really, Yeah, that's really good advice. So really aim for talking to you, a developmental editor, a good six months before their publishing date. Right. Right. Um, and you talked about uh, line editing and copy editing and proofreading. Can you define those? Because I know a lot of people have a lot of different definitions That's for right. those. That, tell me how I, you use them. I will tell you how I define them. But I would also say that um, when you're talking to an editor, ask the editor how they define them. Because every editor I have talked to defines them differently. Um, proofing is the very last step. And, and there shouldn't be any major changes during the proofing step. Um, you might have missed a period or a comma, but you're not going to rephrase things. Um, you're looking for spelling errors. And even like in the formatting step, you're looking for how does it actually look on the page if it's a printed book. Those aren't things that I do, so I don't have as much insight into those. Um, copy editing would be pretty basic um, mechanical changes. So uh, grammar, does it make sense? Did you follow the rules? And when I say follow the rules, you have to define the rule book you actually want to use first. So that's important to talk with your editor about too. Um, Do you want to use the Chicago Manual of Style, which is the pretty much accepted fiction editing manual. Um, But you could also use different ones that that are more common in different industries like news. They don't use the same standards that fiction books do. Um, So copy editing is, is like punctuation, grammar, periods, commas, 
rephrasing things to make them a little more clear, not necessarily sound better because that's line editing. And this is where it can get confusing because some editors consider line and copy editing the same thing. So if they're rephrasing something, it's copy editing. But to me, that's line editing. So if I'm rephrasing th something for voice, voice meaning a, a character and how that character plays on the page, to me, if I'm rephrasing it, not because it's wrong grammatically, but because it would sound better and more in the character's voice, that's line edits to me. Um, and it's a really fine distinction. And that's something I do across a couple different phases. So I might do that during copy edits if, I, if you hire me as the copy editor. And I might do it during developmental edits if you do a detailed developmental. It depends on where the need is at that time, which brings me to developmental. And there's different stages of developmental. So mm -hmm. developmental is essentially the um, making the story a good story. It's all the stuff that goes into crafting the story. So goal, motivation, conflict. Uh, things like world building, pace, voice, there's that word again, what is voice, right? So voice is, voice is how, how something sounds on the page, whether that's the author's voice or the character's voice or the world's voice, everything can have a voice. And one of the choices you have to make is how do you, like, what do you want to have a unique voice and how do you want to represent that voice? And those things define how you do things like line editing. Um, so with developmental, this is a long answer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think people need to hear this. And, you know, depending on the stage of, of learning they're at, this may be completely new to them. Or this may yeah. be like, oh, I've always wondered. <laughs> right. Well, you seem yeah, to be afraid to ask, right? Yeah. Well, everybody knows that. I should know that too. And that is not true. Never be afraid to ask questions, especially if you're paying somebody money. Um, anyway, uh, developmental uh, is, the is basically the story crafting. So when I do developmental, I have two different levels. There's more than two, but I basically try to sum it up into two to make it less confusing. There's a high level, which is like a critique. And in that, I don't even touch the manuscript. I read it. I don't leave any comments in the manuscript itself. I just gave you a report. And that report is basically, here's all the things I, I, I got from your book. Because sometimes what you think you put in is not necessarily what the reader is going to get. So I tell you what I got out of it, considering like the world building, the pace, specific scenes, the opening, the closing, specific characters, um, nuances that you use as a writer, uh, re repetition, um, incorrect word usage, things that you can look out for just sort of stylistically. And then I also tell you how I think you can make it better. I ask questions to make you think, like, are you, you know, what, what's, what's your audience? Or um, how, you know, how quickly do you want this to, to progress? Do you want a slow burn? Do you want, you know, hot and heavy? What is your, what, is, what style do you want to represent here? Um, and then I also give suggestions for how to make some things better. And sometimes those suggestions might be ripping out half the story and replacing it with a different type of plot that I think might work better. But all of that is the author's decision, unless you're with a publishing house. With an independent, it's your decision, what you want to do. Um, now, that's just high level. If you want a detailed structural edit, that's exactly what I just said, plus markings in the manuscript itself. So I'll go through and do line level, some line level edits where I might suggest rephrasings for character voice, or I might highlight an area where I think you can do a better job of line editing. Um, I'll, I'll comment things, say, this is great, this made me laugh, LOL. I like to give positive feedback as well as the constructive criticism because I, I don't think you get enough of that. I think you get a lot of people telling you what's wrong with it. And it's important to understand what you did right too. Yeah, I agree. Because pe I think writers need to hear what they're good at, what might be completely natural and even unconscious. And then you're helping them see, oh, this is actually something that's great. You could focus on bringing that up. You can enhance it. You can put a little more attention on it. That's wonderful. Um, so what are some of the common questions? I know we covered a lot today, but are there any other common questions that you get a lot? Um, and I can think of one actually, which okay. is how much, how much do you cost? How much should oh, I budget if I want to? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. We didn't even talk about cost. We didn't but, talk about cost. Um, I keep mine on my website and I can never remember. I always have to look at it because okay. I have a spreadsheet that tells me everything. But right now I believe it's a penny per word for the high level developmental that I talked about, which is just the report, and it's $0.016, whatever that is in cents, like 1.6 cents, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> for the detailed developmental, okay. which means that it can get pretty expensive, which is why you should make sure that 
you're one in the right step. Like you're doing this at the right time because you, the worst thing is to pay someone a thousand dollars to do an edit on your book to get it back and be like, well, you know, I kind of already knew I needed to make all those changes. Ugh, that's, that's demoralizing. And I don't want to take your money like that. I, I want, I want to help you make it a better story. So that's why it's important to know when, um, some author, some, sorry, authors, some editors don't have their rates posted, uh, and you will have to contact them to find out. It's, it's a, it's a really hard thing to balance because copy editing is pretty standard. You can find it. I think it's like 0.014 cents per word is typically what copy editors charge somewhere around in there. There isn't, there's an organization called the EFA, the editor editors, freelancer association or something like that. And they have a posted list of suggested rates. A lot of people use those as an average, but if you, if you do your research, you're going to find it's all over the spectrum. So it really comes down to just what you want, what you, what you can budget right? What you can afford and what you're willing to pay and how much you trust that person. So look for recommendations. Um, talk to people that they've actually edited for. How was the experience? Did they, did they treat you like a human? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? yeah. um, and then if you have to check in, you can find out what their rates are and then decide. Yeah, that's great. Are there any other questions that you get a lot from people who are checking out your services? I get a lot of new authors which I love. I love that because I, help them, I can help them understand um, basics of craft without having to unlearn bad habits, if that makes sense, right? <laughs> Get them um, early in their creative writing career. Yeah. And they're, mm -hmm. also, they're also like fresh-faced and new and excited and they're not, you know, jaded yet because yeah. they've been rejected a million times, which sucks. Rejection sucks. And I, authors are the bravest people in the world because you put yourself out there all the time and you're constantly getting rejected. So keep on. <laughs> yeah, keep um, on. But I get basic questions because I work with a lot of new people. Like what is, what is voice? What is pacing? Um, and those are pretty easy to answer and you, you'll get that in the developmental report. You'll kind of get an idea of what that means in your story, but more important are things, questions that people don't ask. Like how do I, what do I do once I get the report back? How do I deal with this edit that you just sent me? Let's say that you didn't do a detail. Let's say you did a high level, a macro or a critique. That means you just got a, a 20 page report. What do you do with that? So different authors have different ways of dealing with it. Um, structurally, meaning like how they actually make the changes and also emotionally. And that's something I think I actually want to do a blog post on this because there's literally a cycle of grief that you probably are going to go through when you first get one of these back. And the more you do it, the less severe it is. But I've had people tell me they took antidepressants and drank wine before they opened my reports because they were so worried about what I was going to say. Like, oh God, what am I going to have to change? Right? It's scary because this is your baby. This is a piece of your psyche that you put on paper. <laughs> and you just told someone, tell me what's wrong with me, basically. And so you have to learn to separate yourself from that. And I think it's really important to understand that you're going to feel these things and that's natural. And you should just let it sit and do what comes naturally, meaning don't make a whole bunch of changes the first day. Think about it. What makes sense? Read back through. Let it sit. Think about it. Read back through, right? So I, I agree with you. It, it's a weird thing to talk about grief when we're editing, but I totally found that. <laughs> no, I think it's really great that you're bringing that up, and it's something that I encounter often with the people that I developmentally edit with, and as an author, I experience it as well. I'm experiencing it right now. And it's every time I open up the critique, the feedback I'm getting from all these early readers, uh, I have to brace myself. Like, am I ready to read this? Am I actually ready to read the feedback? And I have to be conscious of maybe right in this moment, I'm not ready. That may be true. Yeah. And maybe you just need to wait because I notice, I don't know about what you've experienced is that writers, we can, we can just create a really big drama in our head about it. Yeah. and um, take a comment so personally when in fact they're just talking about our story that's right they're not but talking it feels about personal it does oh my god <laughs> it feels like one of my early right um readers he said this story at this this stage has a lot of plot holes and when i first saw it my instant reaction was I suck. My story sucks. It all right. sucks. <laughs> right. And then I, I read it a little while later. I'm like, oh, he's right. Actually, I absolutely know that. And I look forward to hearing his input. 
uh, thank goodness for my early reader team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you don't have to pay them usually, which is nice too. <laughs> no, they, they're going to get books and they're going to get goodies right. and I get advanced looks. I'm doing something quite unusual, which I can share with, with y'all some other time. Um, so I think this has been really insightful. It's really great to hear how you work as a developmental editor. I hope everyone listening will get a, a nice introduction into what you do. And if people have questions and want to chat with you and see if you're a good fit for them, how do they contact you? You can email me. Um, my website is davincikitty.com, D-A-V-I-N-C-I-K-I-T-T-I-E, like Leonardo da Vinci and a kitty cat. Yes. That's where it came from. Um, I, my email address is on there. There's also a little form that you can fill out with more information. You can just email me at sue, S-U-E, at davincikitty.com. That's fine too. Um, those are the easiest ways. I keep up to a very active uh, review blog, gravetells.com, G-R-A-V-E-T-E-L-L-S. It started off as paranormal, which is why it's about grave, really not about grave things. Um, but I'm, I'm very active there too. If you are a romance reader and you like to just chat with me, you can. I'm also on Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram. I do videos on Facebook, uh, Facebook Live a lot. So lots of places that we can interact. Almost everywhere I am Gravetells, at Gravetells, except for my website, which is Da Vinci Kitty, and YouTube, I'm Da Vinci Kitty. Wonderful. And all of that, everyone, will be in the show notes. And because this is like a live show, we're going to put this up. You all get to see it. Um, I think that is it. Unless you have any last words, Sue, for, for our authors listening out there. Well, I would like to introduce my cat. <gasps> yeah. Because he's, he's been keeping me company this whole time. This oh, is hello. What's his name? Bailey. Hi, Bailey. He's named after um, Party of Five. If anybody remembers Party of Five, there was a Bailey that I had a crush on. He is almost 20 years old and he's blind. And so he's my, like, petting him keeps him quiet. <laughs> so he's keeping me company to stay quiet today. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, so wonderful. Thank you so much for having me, Beth. Oh, you're so welcome, Sue. And everyone, if you have questions for Sue, please contact her. If you have questions for me, please contact me. My information will be in the show notes as well. So have a wonderful, uh, creative day, everyone, and we'll see you in the next show.